Hello everybody and welcome to uh, another episode of uh, At Home With Dan with me, Dan Graham. Um, today I'm going to be making uh, one of my uh, favourite desserts as, as a child, um, profiteroles or shoe buns. Um, so it's going to be a shoe pastry. So the first thing I'm going to make for the shoe pastry is what's called a cracker one. So it's the crispy shell on the top of the shoe pastry. It's a really simple mix to make. You don't have to do it, it just gives the, the, the profiterole of the shoe bun just that little something extra. Um, so for the cracker one, all you need is a mixing bowl and then in this bowl I've got 60 grams of plain flour and 60 grams of soft brown sugar. I'm just going to put that into the big mixing bowl. So once that's in the big mixing bowl just give it a little mix together just to incorporate those two ingredients together. Just a quick, quick mix. And then in my pan here I've got 55 grams of softened butter. Uh, so I've actually melted this and then I've just allowed it to kind of come to room temperature again. Pour that into the mix. Get all in your... And then what we're going to do is just give that a really good mix together so it creates a really thick kind of paste. I'm just using a plastic spoon or a wooden spoon. Uh, if you've got a spatula you could use a spatula. If you find it's taking a little bit of time to come together, what you can do is just give it a little mush up with your hands and the temperature from your hands will just help that come together. So once it's all mixed together, what we're going to do is put it on some greaseproof paper and then flatten it between two sheets of greaseproof. So I've got my greaseproof paper here. I've folded it over and what I'm going to do is put, put the mix on half of the paper. So, push it down, and you can see as you start pushing it down, it starts to um, come together as a bit of a pastry. And then just fold over the grease proof over the top, so you've created a little bit of a sandwich. So once you've done this, you can, you can use your hands to push it down, or if you wish you can use a rolling pin, just makes it a little bit easier. And you just want to roll it out nice and thinly, so it's like two or, th two or three millimeters thick. Right guys, so that's nice. rolled out nice and thin now. Got that onto a tray. What I'm going to do now is whilst I'm making the shoe paste is I'm going to put this in the fridge and just let it firm up. Right guys, now the crack line's in the fridge and that's just firming up ready for us later. I'm going to move on to the shoe paste. So for the shoe paste, in, in a big saucepan, or a medium sized saucepan, I've got I've got my milk, I've got my butter, and I've got salt and sugar. In a separate bowl, I've already got pre-weighed some plain flour. And then in this bowl, I've got four eggs already cracked. So what we're gonna do is put the pan, the pan with the milk and the butter and salt and sugar, it's gonna go on the stove. And what we're looking is to slowly bring that up to the boil and let the butter melt into the milk and, and the salt and the sugar is going to dissolve into it. Once we get to that stage, we're then going to add the flour. Just got a spatula here, which I'm going to do that with. So as the butter starts to melt into your milk mix, just give it a little stir with the spatula. That'll look a little bit like an oil slick on the top, but that's fine, don't worry about that. Just keep it moving a little bit because you don't want the milk to catch to the bottom of the pan. Milk tends to catch to the base of the pan really quickly. Right, so now all the butter's melted into the milk. What I'm going to do is add the flour to the milk mix. So you've got your flour, just tip all the flour in in one go. And then give it a good stir. And this is going to form a bit of a dough, quite a thick dough in fact. And what you need to do is keep moving, keep moving it around. So as you might be able to see in the pan there, it's created a, a really thick dough. What we need to do now is just cook it out for two minutes, just moving it around all the time and that just cooks out the flour and it just gets rid of that kind of raw flour taste. Right guys, so now we've cooked our flour off, what I'm gonna do is take that off the temperature, take that off the heat um, and then put the mix into another bowl and basically by putting it into another bowl, it just stops that cooking process. So now we've got our dough inside of the bowl, what we need to do is we need to wait for this to cool down until we can add the eggs. So what you can do 
is just to keep it moving around a little bit in the bowl. And as you can see, as you move it around, the, the, the heat of up or the heat escapes, uh, all the steam comes up. So the faster you move it around, the quicker it will cool down. It, this will take a few minutes to, to do, so uh, just be patient with it. Everybody, so we've let our, uh, sh our chewed dough kind of cool down a little bit. It doesn't have to be cold cold or fridge cold, it just has to be kind of cool enough that you can handle. Um, if it's still too hot for you to touch with your fingers, it's too hot to add the eggs. What it'll do is if you add the eggs too soon when it's still warm, it'll actually start to cook the eggs, which will in turn stop your shoe bun from raising because the eggs have already cooked and kind of finished their job. So what we need to do is just add, add your eggs kind of one at a time. And what you'll find is as you, as you add your eggs, when you're first incorporating it into the mix, it kind of splits the mix a little bit and it looks like it's all gone wrong. Don't worry if it does that, it, it, it does do that. And what you need to do is just keep working it and keep mixing it until it comes together. The first, the first couple of eggs that go in are really difficult to bind in. They seem to take a long time because the dough is really thick. Once you get to your last egg, it becomes a thick paste, so it just becomes easier to kind of work in. Right guys, so that's our paste nearing finished. Nice and smooth, take it down off the sides. So that's, a, that's the paste nice and mixed. So what I'm gonna do now is I've got a piping bag. Um, you can get these from a lot of cookware shops. Um, even the supermarkets have some piping bags. Uh, you're more than welcome to use a, a reusable cloth one if you so wish. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put the shoe paste into the piping bag. So I've got all the mix into the bag there. I'm just going to push it all down to the bottom. I'm just going to use a knife and nip off, nip off the end. And then just squeeze it to the end and then we're ready to pipe. So just nip the end off and we're ready, ready to pipe it now. So I'm just going to get a couple of bacon trays. So I've got some pre-lined trays here. I've lined them with this uh, non-slip silicon mat. Uh, you can use greaseproof paper if you wish. A little tip if you do use greaseproof paper, just put a little touch of the shoe paste in between the tray and the paper and it'll stick the paper down. Otherwise, if you're going into a fan assisted oven, you'll find it waves around all over. So, piping it onto the tray, a little tip that I do. So, if you push everything down and use your finger, your index finger and your thumb, pinch it together and then wrap the excess bag around your index finger and then twist and you're basically locked off so everything's always going to come out the nozzle as opposed to going back up the piping bag. And what I'm going to look for is kind of like two to three centimeter little dollops of the mix. So push it down, firm push, and then spike it up like so. If you're trying to get them all the same size, a little tip that I do I don't know if this is just a chefy thing or if it's just something I do. As I'm doing it, you try and do the constant pressure of the squeeze the same all the time. And I tend to count, so I'll count like one, two, three, lift. One, two, three, lift. One, two, three, lift. And then you should get the same size all the way across. So that is the kind of shape we're looking for for fitter rolls. If you wanted to make eclairs, let's say, what you're looking for is a, a long, thin kind of sausage shape. So again, just push constant pressure gently across. Right, so that's all our mix fully piped out. I've got one tray of profiter rolls and I've got one tray of eclairs. Right guys, so as you can see, I've got the crackle on out of the fridge. It's set up and it's nice and firm now. So just peel back the top layer of the grease proof and then using a little cutter, what I'm gonna do is just cut little rings out and then pop them straight on top of the shoe paste. And what the crack line does is it melts down over the top of the shoe bun and it kind of crystallizes and gives it a really nice crispy texture on the top. So we just need to repeat that until they're all done. Right guys, so that's all the profiteroles got the cracker land on top. If you have any of the cracker land spare, what I'll do is just can cut it up and put a little bit onto the eclairs as well. Right guys, so that's our 
shoe buttons and our eclair shapes both got the crackle on both ready to go i've got my oven switched on here it's a fan assisted oven and it's preheated to 200 degrees if you're not on a fan assisted maybe it's got 10 degrees hotter and if you're on a gas mark it's about gas mark seven um, so what we're going to do is go straight in with these into the oven and our shoe buns are going to take roughly 12 to 15 minutes to cook so what we'll do is we'll give them 12 minutes to begin with and we'll check them after that and what we're looking looking for is a really nicely raised light golden brown really light and fluffy shoe bun right guys so we're back to see if everything cooked um, it's actually been about 18 minutes. I did check after 12 and they still had some time left to go. Um, so these have been for 18 minutes. Um, so with the cooking times, if you think of 15 to 20 minutes and just have a look at them every now and again. When you do check them, this is a really, really good point. Check them just through the oven door. Just look at them to see what they're looking like and how golden they are. With shoe pastry, if you open the oven door and let all the steam and the heat out, there's a chance that they may collapse. So just leave them in the oven and it's always best actually just to err on this on the side of caution and just give them a few extra minutes and that'll just dry them up and crisp them up so they don't collapse on themselves when they open so as i say mine have been in for 18 minutes now i'm just going to take them out and see what they're like so there we have the perfetta rolls and here we have the eclairs so as you can see, they've all risen up really nicely. The crackling has gone nice and crispy on top. They've all puffed up. They're quite close together, but, but they're not touching, which is, which is great what we're looking for. Next thing we need to do now is just transfer these onto a cooling wire. Um, just let them cool. As soon as they've gone cold, what we can do is we can then fill them with whatever filling we want. Right guys, so our shoe buns have now cooled. They're, they're ready to handle now. Um, so I've already got a creme patisserie made. Um, it's one I've made earlier, obviously. Um, I do have a recipe um, on my YouTube channel for creme patisserie, so if you want to use creme patisserie to fill your shoe buns, please check out the other episode for creme patisserie and you'll be able to find the recipe and the method for that there. It's actually simpler than you would think. Um, if you don't want to do the creme patisserie, you can just do chantilly cream, that's fine. Um, so what we're going to do is we're just going to take our shoe buns and on the bottom of them, I'm just going to do a little crisscross sign on the bottom with a knife, small knife, and then taking your creme patisserie or whatever filling you choose to do, just stab the end of the piping bag into the into the cross that you've just made, and just pipe the mix out till it fills up, and you can see it comes out the end there. And that's it. As simple as that. Shoe shoe pastry, shoe buns filled with a creme patisserie. You can serve them just as they are. Or you can put a little bit of ice and sugar on, just jazz them up a touch if you want. Right guys, so thanks very much for joining me today on this episode of Shoe Pastry. Um, I hope you've all learned something and I hope you've all enjoyed it. Um, happy cooking guys and I'd love to see some of the stuff you do. Thank you very much. Take care.